Laodicea will receive the crown of righteousness if they are faithful in keeping the faith all the way to the finish course. It's not enough just to run. Brothers and sisters, we must finish our course. And when we finish it, we must have kept the faith. The faith, not a faith, not any faith, but we must have kept the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That doctrine, those teachings that were founded upon the apostles and the prophets. So he says, I've kept the faith and there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness and not for me only, but almost like saying, but also for Laodicea. If they love his appearing. And so here, this crown of righteousness that God wants to give to the church of Laodicea. But Jesus, remember, in Revelation 3, is knocking at the door of the heart. And he now wants to barter. He's a merchant and he says, listen, you don't have it, but I do. You think you have it, but you don't. But if you don't recognize what you don't have, then brothers and sisters, you'll never accept it. Go back to Revelation. Go back to Revelation chapter 3. Notice what it says. Revelation chapter 3. Now, we looked at this once before, and we saw that the church of Laodicea parallels the church in Jesus' day. When Jesus came to the church, the Bible says that he quoted Isaiah 61, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And to set at liberty those that are bruised, to the, set free the captives. And when they recognized that Jesus was speaking about them, they put him out of the synagogue. So much so that they tried to cast him over the brow. And just as they did to Jesus, now remember, Jesus was a messenger. Jesus says, these are not my words, but the Father which have sent me. This is why Paul refers to Jesus in Acts and pardon me, in Hebrews chapter 3, he refers to Jesus as an apostle. Because an apostle is one that is sent. So Jesus came in humanity, but he came to represent the Father. But they rejected Jesus, and so rejecting Jesus, they rejected the Father. Because he said, I and my Father are one. So those whom God will have to go to Laodicea, they must be one with the Father. They must be one with Christ. They themselves would have come out of this condition. Notice Hebrews chapter 5. Look with me in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, and we'll finish this. Hebrews 5, and let's look at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 5, looking at verse 1. Hebrews 5. Looking at verse 1, and we're looking at verse 1 down to verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Notice what the Bible says in Hebrews 5, verse 1, when you have it, amen? It says, for every high priest, and this is speaking concerning Aaron and Christ, but I want you to catch the point because it represents us as well. For every high priest is taken where? From among men. Is ordained for men and things pertaining to God. That he may offer both what? Gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have what? Compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. For that he himself also is what? Compassed or compassed with infirmities and by reason here and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins and no man taketh his honor unto himself but he that is what called, called of God as was Aaron so God says those priests those ministers that he will use in these last days they don't take honor to themselves because they were called of God and they themselves know what it's like because they themselves are compassed with infirmities. This is why Paul says, there is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful that with the temptation, he will also do what? 
make a way of escape. Paul knows what it's like to be tempted. So those whom God uses are those who themselves have been tempted. So those who will really give the message to Laodicea are those who recognize that they were in this wretched condition that Jesus identifies and they allowed Christ to bring them out of it. Are we together? So Laodicea or the messengers does not come to the church with this high and mighty attitude. They come to one that is also touched with the feelings of your infirmities. I know what it's like to be wretched and miserable and poor and blind and destitute of the righteousness of Christ. I know what it's like to be satisfied with the world. I know what it's like to have no need of Jesus. But I allowed the Spirit of God, I heard that voice, and I opened the door, and Jesus came in, and I exchanged my poverty for his riches. I exchanged my nakedness for his righteousness. I exchanged my blindness for his wisdom. And as a result of it, I stand before you today, not as a boastful man, but as one who has been touched by the life of Jesus. These are the ones that Jesus sends to Laodicea. Notice your Bible tells you in the book of Luke chapter 8. Look at Luke chapter 8, brothers and sisters. Luke chapter 8. Luke, the 8th chapter. Notice what your Bible says in Luke chapter 8. I want to find uh, this story in Luke chapter 8. And I want us to begin at verse 26. Luke chapter 8, looking at verse 26. This is the story of those men who were demon possessed in the Gadarenes that were in the tomb cutting themselves. Now, I want you to notice what it says here in Luke chapter 8, and I want us to begin in verse 26. Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 26, do you have it? The Bible says this. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore what? No clothes. No clothes. Neither abode in any house, but in the tombs, dead. Now consider, Laodicea has, they think they're clothed, but they're really what? They're really naked. So this man that is possessed with devils symbolizes Laodicea. If Jesus is on the outside, then brothers and sisters, that means Satan is on the inside. We cannot occupy neutral ground. There's only two powers that is going to possess the temple of God's people on this earth. And when I say God's people, I'm talking about humanity. And that is either God is occupying the throne or Satan does because God does not share the throne with Satan and we do not live unto ourselves. We are motivated by a power from above or by one that is beneath. We are told in inspiration that the Pharisees, although they were pious and religious on the outside, was more possessed of demons and devils than these men here. But they had a possession that led them to believe that they were right with God when they were all wrong. Notice what it says. It says that these men had no clothes. And then all of a sudden we recognize that there was chaos. And then the devils came out and ran into the swine and ran them off the cliff. But I want you to jump over now to verse 35. Jump over now to verse 35. And notice what it says in verse 39, verse 35. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found what? The man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting where? And what were they? Clothed and in their right mind. And they were afraid. In other words, the people were afraid. Because here this man was, possessed of devils, but he was naked. And now they find him moments later, and he's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Clothed and in his right mind. What did Jesus do with this man? Notice what he says in verse 39. He said in verse 39, he says, return to what? Thine own house and do what? Show how great things God have done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things that Jesus had done 
unto him. Jesus took this demon-possessed man who was of this region, and Jesus healed him, Jesus clothed him, Jesus gave him the gospel, and he sent him back to his own house. And he began to publish throughout all that regions the great things of the power of God. So the Bible lets us know that Jesus is going to take Laodiceans and he's going to clean them up as they allow Christ to come in and Jesus sends them back to Laodiceans to prepare them for the coming of Jesus. This is what God desires to do. Now I want to close, but I want to identify these things, these articles that Jesus wants to give us. Now, we know that their condition is one here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Notice what it says, Revelation 3 and verse 18. Keep in mind that these things that Jesus gives us are not things that, that, that in other words, Jesus is not like a receptacle. In other words, we don't go to church and grab these things and then we go and live our lives the way we want to. Jesus is not a receptacle where we take these things from him and use them as we feel. These are things that come with Jesus as he comes into our life. Amen? Amen. So these are things that he works in us. The Bible says that it is God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So it is God that works these things in us, and he shows us how to use that which we're unfamiliar with. Jesus gives us his righteousness, but he sends it with instructions, the Holy Spirit, and angels who guides our feet in the path of life. Because with all that God gives us, we do not know how to live for God without God. Notice what it says. He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold. This gold symbolizes faith and love. It tells us, put this in your notes, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, that the trial of our faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth. So God likens this gold to faith. But he says in Galatians 5, verse 6, write this down. That faith worketh by love. So the motivation that the faith we have in Jesus is motivated by the love of Jesus. By the love that God has for us. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he says, I live by faith because of love. So faith must be worked by love as we consider what Jesus did to give us what we have. It motivates us and it compels us and it constrains us to move forward in the power and the faith and the love of God. Amen. So God says, this is what I bring. I bring faith to supplement or to take the place of your poverty. But if you don't believe that you need this faith and love, brothers and sisters, you will remain destitute all the way till Jesus comes back. And then you will be like those in Revelation 6 that run to the rocks and to the mountains and say, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sitteth upon the throne. And Let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee.